Hey everybody, Nate here uh, from my mod, and I'm back with another video. Uh, this one is a huge thank you video to say that we are currently smashing all of our targets uh, for views and engagement and comments on our YouTube channel. Um, it's gone way past what we expected it to be at this stage, and we've got you to thank for it. So thank you so much. Uh, if you could have seen me in this video, I'd give you a full salute. Um, and this page is only going to continue to grow and develop. I can't wait uh, to see how it goes. And I'm going to thank you guys once more for being on that journey with us. 80,000 total views uh, we've been getting from just the Riders Republic playlist. Um, you can tell that we've really reached out to an audience here and created a community. Uh, and we're going to build on that. We're going to do more videos for Riders Republic. Um, I'll be doing live streams as soon as the game comes out. So you've got a lot to look forward to on this channel. So um, my suggestion is subscribe and put the notifications on so that you won't miss any minutes from uh, all of these videos that we're going to put post up uh, to make sure that you are constantly in the loop with regards to all the new games that are coming out, especially Riders Republic. So the plan for today is um, that we're going to play a little bit of Steep and we're going to talk about how some of the features in Steep should definitely be implemented and passed over into Riders Republic. And there's one feature in particular that I really think needs to be pushed, and that's the replay feature. I bet you're thinking to yourself, why does he want a replay feature from Steep in Riders Republic? Well, if anybody's used the replay feature in, in uh, Steep, it's actually so intuitive, really, really cool program um, that helps you create some awesome videos and sort of mini cinematic movies. Uh, that you can see on our YouTube page. I'll put a link up to the playlist of some of our really, uh, really cool cinematics for Steep. And basically, you know, that's kind of my favorite part of the game is to create those awesome videos. Uh, and Steep allows me to do that. So uh, it needs to be, for me anyway, in Riders Republic. From what we heard, there is this thing in the Riders Republic hub called the Lab, which supposedly allows you to edit and mix up your videos and share your videos with all of your friends on Riders Republic as seen in the uh, TV trailer. So we're kind of hoping that that lab has um, features that are very similar to that in Steep. Uh, so what I'm going to do in a video today is actually record a line I've done previously on Steep and I'm going to show you my complete workflow from how I create the line uh, to what camera angles I'm going to use, then I'll show you the replay feature in Steep and how I use it. Lots to talk about in this video, guys, so sit back, relax, and if you can, drink a my mod, because we're not just about videos here, we're also about energy, and better yet, we specialize in it. Delicious, clean energy drinks in four awesome flavors that you can order from mymodgaming.com. Damn, that's clean. All right, let's get on with it. So, here we are. For the sake of the video, I've already made a line. Uh, it's you know, fairly good, nothing special, but uh, it will do for the video. So as you can see, you can see my display trails here. If any of you are having problems finding your trails or saving them, um, here's how you do it. So, Let's just say you want to create your new line. Pick your board or your skis or whatever you want to do. Uh, ski down. Do what the hell you want to do. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. And one of these. Oh, there you go. Okay, so if I go to the mountain view now. Um, if you look up in the top left where activity suggestions are. Well, it might come up with it, this first, so exploration info. And if you click that, it goes down to activity suggestions. And then in the bottom left corner of the screen, you'll see my trials. So you just skip across to when you get to your trials. We are share content. Uh, here is the ride, what I just done, where I crashed. You can see the crash indicates the black line there. Um, this is... Uh, where you're riding to the blue line is when your skis or your snowboards touch to the ground and then the yellow here is where you make your jumps and your tricks you'll see 
um, and they'll be highlighted as sort of the most critical points of your run where the points are generated. If you hover over any one of these dots, you'll see an action list. Click it, and then there's your options there. You can share the ride, which saves it to your, um, I guess it's like a cloud save storage thing. Uh, and Sorry, you save the ride first, and then you share the ride. And of course, you can delete it if you don't want them. I think there is a uh, memory limit. So uh, I think, you know, if you do like 100 runs in one session, it's going to erase them up to a certain point. I think it's like maybe probably like 20 runs or something like that. And it begins to cycle out that memory. So make sure that once you've done the run that you want to do, uh, that you quickly save it. And make sure that it's recorded into your save uh cloud save file <clears throat> then you get options from this as well so let's say if it's a really good run uh, and it's going to be hard to beat if anybody tries to uh, then you can set it as a challenge a tactical race or here you go like freestyle races so it'd be tricks required not time required uh, this bone collector one says not available for this for some reason but bone collector is, is how much damage you can rack up on your player body uh, by failing or bailing uh, your tricks or your jumps. We don't need any of that today though. We're going to the replay section here in the wheel. Um, so you can pick up on your replay from which dot that you pressed, but I would always recommend going from full. Uh, you go from full, you just see what I've just done there. Now the really crazy thing about this replay system is that what you're seeing on this replay here isn't pre-recorded. This is actually rendered in real time whilst I'm in the lobby. It's really, like, I can't explain it. Like, I'm by no means a, a technician or, you know, game developer, so I, I couldn't understand you know, the reason behind it. But um, you'll find that when you crash, like, the reason I know this is that when you crash, sometimes your skis, like, when they pop off, they'll go in, like, one direction or... And then you go back and do the replay again. And the skis pop off and go elsewhere. Can you see that? So that's what tells me it's in real time. I don't know how useful that will be to you, but uh, I thought that was pretty interesting tonight. So we don't actually want to use this run. I'm going to use uh, this one here. No, let's try this one. Why not? So what I'll do is I'll start it from full. So now we're in the replay mode. Uh, I'm recording on the game DVR, the Elgato 60S Plus, I think it is. So this is this is the footage. This is the B-roll footage that I'll be using to edit my video. You'll see all of the HUD options on the right are going to be visible if I keep them on the screen. So when I go into the edit, they're still going to be there. And I don't want that, of course. I want the, the image to be crisp and clean and not have any interference from the HUD. So in the bottom right there, you'll see hide and show HUD. You can take that off. So now I'm recording with my Elgato. I'm getting a clean image. Almost looks like um, that I'm using like a, like a dev kit or something like that. Which I think is probably, you know, a small part of, of the dev kit that they use, this replay system. So, A's to go. I mean, I always refer back to the, um, the HUD, so you'll see in the top A's to go there. RB's to speed up and slow down, as you can see. So, when you go to a jump, super slow-mo it. Let's get a nice image, a nice super slow image. Um, note to editors if you're making films and if anybody's got any sort of, you know, relative knowledge of editing, um, this is filmed um, in a specific frame rate. Trying to slow this footage down, I don't even think it's at 60, so I think it's less than 60 frames a second at the moment. I'm on a uh, Xbox One X. I'm rendering at 1080p. Um, but it's still, I don't think it's 60 frames a second. So if you are planning on doing some speed ramping on your edit, uh, to s slow and speed up time, 
Um, I would recommend that if you're doing steep videos that you use the slow motion uh, option on here. It's much more, so much more better for ease of use and for control. Um, and that is the RB button on the Xbox R1 or I would imagine R1 for the PlayStation. I don't know what it is for PC, I'm afraid. So the way that I would record my videos is that I would maybe do two or three runs uh, of full image. Um, so not B-roll, it'd just be like the main image. Uh, let's see, how do I change? Oh, that's it. So LB, although it doesn't say anything, LB does change your camera position. So let's, let's say for example, I, I wanted a first person view, I'd record the whole thing going down the whole line in first person then I would come all the way back up and I change it I do maybe this angle and I do the whole run again and record that on the Elgato so that's two full runs of, of content I can use there that I can dip in and out of this would probably be like my like my main angle in the video and then things like this here the selfie cam would be you know, part of the b-roll footage so at this point now it's just you know if, if you get that workflow correct uh, for the b-roll stuff it's just about picking your your shots and this is where I, I couldn't help you personally um, this is left down entirely to your creative ability uh, to, to pick the right angles so something that I always thought deters away from the realism aspect of gameplay footage like this, especially when you're getting cinematic videos, is that this camera angle here could not happen in real life. Well, not currently. I think you know drones are getting quite close to uh, mimicking this type of camera angle. Um, really, you know, the money comes from the fixed camera angles to make it look as real as possible. So I find the uh, camera angle on the LB button or the L1 button, don't know what it is for PC, uh, till I can find a camera angle that allows me to move with the right analog stick. So this is like the free camera position. Now if I go into director mode that you can see on the top right which is left on the D-pad, that allows me to move the camera in a free position here. But this, so there's three types of these free cameras. This one here will stay in a fixed position. Oh, no, this one is a tracking one, sorry. So this camera here is a tracking camera. And then if I press LB again, I've got a camera that is fixed to a certain position, just like that. Now this is where I like the realism aspect comes in for me. That's a really nice shot actually, transferring onto the houses there. Um, so this is, you know, a typical shot that I would actually use. But what this camera angle is doing is actually doing some of the work for me. It's tracking the player model, even though it's in a static position. Now there's one other type of director mode camera, free, free in camera that you can use, which you control the angle and the motion of the camera yourself. Now this is a lot more complicated. So I get really quite frustrated with this camera angle because uh, it's really hard to get what I need perfect. Um, the controls are a bit dodgy um, and a bit too sensitive at times and a bit less sensitive in others uh, but if you can get this director mode free aim camera type uh, down you're gonna get the best shots with this one because there's so much creative freedom involved with with having you know all of those axes available to you um, to note here to zoom in and out is not using the analog sticks at all, it's the right trigger and the left trigger, L2 and R2. So if I show you, I will pre-engage my zoom and then tap A and then you get that sort of slow movement in it. Now I can make that look a hundred times better uh, if I took off the HUD and I slowed it down just a tad. So watch this now. 
So it kind of looks a bit better. I mean, I'm not saying that would be my final angle for that particular shot, but just show you how I would use it. You have to be quite sensitive with your analog sticks for, for using this. Um, so I would practice on that. I have found a little hack, um, which could be helpful to anybody that uses an Xbox or uses a, an Xbox controller on PC. Um, <clears throat> so the Xbox Elite controller, of course, has all that button mapping op options. It also has a, a way to reduce the sensitivity of your analog sticks as well. I find that putting like the softest options on your analog stick sensitivity with the Xbox Elite controller is the best way to control the uh, replay camera. Now, you, I mean, I'm really touching into quite specific things there, but if you really wanted to master um, your cinematic craft on this game, then I would recommend using an Elite controller and lowering the sensitivity um, options for your analog sticks. There's a bit of effort involved, of course, in making these videos, but it's only effort if you don't enjoy it, and I really enjoy it. It's kind of a weird passion for me to make creative videos like this, so, you know, it doesn't feel like work to me. It just feels like a lot of fun. One more really important thing that I didn't mention, actually, at the start of the video, um, is that you can create your scene with Steep as well. It's just another cool feature. Uh, you can adjust your time of day, as you can see here, move the sun around. Make it a bit dark, make it a bit shadowy if you wanted to get that kind of mood, that particular mood for it. I like my videos quite visible, although I did make a dark video in the night. Um, but I feel like you get the best definition and resolution out of uh, a really bright setting. Maybe a slight angle as well, so you get some cool shadowing going on. Um, and you can change your ambience as well. At this moment, for some strange reason, my ambience option isn't there in the corner. So if I go to the uh, the mountain view, now you can see in the bottom right corner my ambience. Uh, I've got the option to change it there so I can, you know, add snow particle effects or fog or turn it to nighttime. You know, you have that entire freedom to make the video how you want it and give it a particular color palette or a particular mood if you wanted it to. For the sake of this video, we're just going to keep it nice and clean today. And uh, I'll uh, show you some cool angles that I would have probably got. So, free moving camera, director mode, zoom in. Probably the best way to start for me would be almost like bliss. So this this is obviously where the difficulty lies in creating these videos. Um, you have to make sure that you're <laughs> you have good knowledge of the control scheme. Um, I'm a bit rusty at the moment. You really need to be quite consistent when you're doing videos like these, but um, unfortunately, I'm not at the moment. Um, so allow me the time please okay so direct mode I'm in now I need to change LB twice to get that free aim camera now as you can see when he runs into videos like this he's obviously quite quick and you don't you know you, if, let's say for example you wanted to get his foot in a close up and do it like this you know, you don't get a lot of time to pick your precise, precise shot. So what I do is I turn it to super slow motion and then kind of line up as he stops where I want to put my camera here. So I know at this point, now if I keep my... That's a nice shot. I quite like that. So I think that's a good way to start it. Just a word of mention, there is a limit to how far the camera, uh, so there's a distance limit to how far the camera and the player have to be within each other, so there's a vicinity there that has to be met. Once they go past that distance, 
the camera, will, even though it's on free aim like this and, and manual controlled, it will start to track the player. Um, I can show you if I want you to. So let's put it in normal speed. You'd think that this camera would stay now to the end of the run, but look, it's starting to pull now. So there's a certain distance before the camera has to start to follow the player. I think that's probably because of the real-time element to the replay system here. I could be wrong, I don't know, I don't know why this has to be the case, but it is. It is what it is. So, get back to that cool angle. I can see that little bit of snow on the lip there. I think that's where the board hits the lip. So, I'm going to use that as my point. And then, so we're in full mode here. I think slow would probably be better for this shot. So I'm going to hide the HUD and I'm going to play. Oh. <laughs> Excellent. So there's my first shot. For continuity's sake, it would be nice if you paused it and then you reconnect your camera to wherever the player is still um because that will help continuity doesn't it's not the be all and end all if you miss out on the continuity elements um you can do some clever editing to make sure that it lines up perfectly that's absolutely fine so of course i've got that still camera maybe this time around i'll do a following tracking I won't. I'm going to keep it here, but I'm going to follow it on this one. I'm going to allow the computer to follow him because some of these movements are a bit too precise for the clunky control set. So here you go. Nice, keep him nice and center. And that's perfect. Nice slow mo there. I always like. Uh, using objects in the area uh, to add a bit of depth to the shot even though there's no soft focus or shallow depth of field in this camera in these cameras um, it is just nice to have some things in the foreground filling uh, that frame space just for creative uh, as a you know a creative tool make things look a bit more realistic although the 1080p definition is not working right here at the moment by the looks of it god that's terrible uh, right so for here there we go nice little connection down transfer onto the next roof pretty smart camera angle there i like that favorite parts of the run here that transfer when we jump into the half very smooth very clean the board lines perfectly um, so obviously i take a lot of my inspiration for camera angles from you know things like x games or the winter olympics uh, which you know, of course they you know all about camera angles when they're doing their televised broadcasts You always see camera stations slightly higher than the half pipe in a position like this. Maybe go up a little bit more, take it out a bit. And hopefully this player will then fill the screen. Well, that's pretty good. I'll take that. So, you know, obviously with an upside down shot as well, and, and I referenced that I would take one of I'll take three lines going down with the selfie camera, the GoPro camera, and the um, sort of the, the third party camera, uh, the third person camera. So then I'd mix something up like, uh, I'd leave the direct mode and do this, for example. Now, a nice touch with this game, 
um, is that you can do those sort of high speed slow mo shots here. So you could go down at full speed, hit RB twice, and get that super slow mo effect. Maybe even mix the cameras up here. If I click it once, go straight back into full speed. Up on the jump, slow this down again. Get some really gnarly, insane angles on the cameras there. So just a thing to note, guys, that when you're recording, if you are rewinding and fast-forwarding to get the shots that you want, that you want to give some time for that pixelation to disappear. Uh, I can't hear it at the moment, but also that pixelation creates like a distortion audio effect as well. And you don't want that in your edit if you want to keep it nice and clean. Um, so always give yourself, you know, an extra second to, to allow that pixelation to recalibrate. So I've compiled all the footage from today. Uh, and I plan to make a small cinematic that's going to be at the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm hoping that these features will pass over into Riders Republic as well. Fingers crossed. Uh, maybe even with more things like the addition to add props and such. Uh, to create your scenes and make them uh, as personal to you as possible. Uh, who knows? Time will tell. If you haven't seen all my Riders Republic videos as well, there's a playlist on our channel. Uh, just click play all and watch them all through and hopefully you'll get all of the information that you require at this moment in time. Thank you very much guys, enjoy your day and I will see you in the next video.